So is to start with how, how this uh, Bihangam Yoga works, I will just take you to uh, the first stage and second stage of Bihangam Yoga. The first stage, the very first stage of Bihangam Yoga, it starts how your mind functions. Like, you know, the man has always been in search of truth and real happiness. But, you know, there's one thing that has always eluded humanity, that it's mind. And the whole the universe, the universe that, that is very much present to you is nothing but the mass energy that exists outside and inside of us as well. So whatever you happen to see outside world is very much what we are made of. So the technique of meditation, the technique of Bihanga meditation leads you in the same path where you can find yourself with the energy that is present in this universe. And the best way to align yourself with that energy, that vibration that is present in the universe to start with your mind, to start with the practice that taps the potentialities of your mind in a right manner, in a proper manner. Our present condition cannot allow us to feel that energy, that, to feel that vibration that is all around us. And maybe the pranayama is one of the endeavor through which we try to collect ourselves. Before we start the session, we had a short duration time for pranayama as well. So your mind and prana is closely connected, is intertwined. And unless you understand how your mind works, you won't be able to make any sig significant progress as far as the spirituality is concerned. So Anand Safaldev Ji Maharaj, he has explicitly mentioned in his Swaraveda that the very practice of the first stage of Bhingam Yoga meditation takes you from where you are, from the state of bewilderment and confusion, because you are always surrounded with a lot of choices in life today. In this age and time where you have been bombarded and you almost find yourself totally bewildered with the number of choices that this world presents to you today. But the technique of meditation says, the technique of Brahmavidya meditation says that through the practice, through the correct method of practice, you can understand, you can actually get to know how your mind works. Sometimes at times, there are times when you don't realize why things happen the way it does. And you always find yourself asking this question again and again, why, why this? The life throws you different surprises, sometimes pleasant, sometimes unpleasant. When something unpleasant happens, you keep asking this. So with the meditation practice, with the practice of Bihangam Yoga, first of Bihangam Yoga, you actually get to get into the nuances you get into the subtleness, 
the very subtle subtleties of our mind and we get to know all that things all the machinations that mind creates in path to god realization in path to the self realization so the first thing is to know who we actually are and that starts with understanding how our mind works so sri swami ji says that it starts with the pranayama we we start with the exercises and the first stage of bhingam yoga where we try to connect our breath and concentration at a particular place in our body and if we keep focusing at one point at a particular place our body our mind gets weakened it is really weak at that point and then what happens there is a sense of compassion there is a sense of serenity that exists all inside you for example you know if it's like you become aware about self it's about creating awareness about yourself and that creation of awareness leads you from confusion from doubt to thought of clarity from bewilderment to the decision making power and then the second stage of bhingam yoga where the ingla pingla and susmana there are three veins that exist very much inside us where we try to connect these three veins all together at once and when the mind takes a bath when the mind bathes itself in the confluence of what we call inside that you know there is a river where is a very uh, uh, sacred river that flows in our country ganga yamuna and saraswati saraswati is like hidden so that ganga yamuna and saraswati exists very much inside and when we when the mind bathes itself in the confluence of to these three rivers there is a transformation in life there is a massive change in our thought process because the mind has totally been cleansed the mind has been totally purified so this method of meditation is actually very practical and pragmatic and does not fail on the ground of pragmatism but it has to be done in the guidance under the guidance of sadguru and you know you may you may have so many lights on here you can see the light but if there is no power there won't be any light there may be many equipments the mind does not just come right in front and play its game for example i can give you example here if you are uh, nicely seated here you are pleasantly seated here while your mind takes you away far away from this room and it sometimes it says